what we're going to do here, this is an integral of f is equal to this. I want to find, actually, the integral of f. I want to, so I want to calculate this, and then I want to find lowercase f, which basically means find the derivative of this to get back to its original function. So to find the integral of this, let's just do the integral. What we have here is t is going to be t squared over 2, and 2 is going to be 2t. And my interval is from x to 0. So when you do that, you end up with it looks like we're going to have x squared over 2 plus 2x. That's f of x. And then 0, what you're going to do is when you plug in 0, when you plug in 0 here and here, that actually just ends up being 0. So that actually disappears. Again, when you plug in 0 to this, you get 0 and 0. So that's 0. So f of x is equal to x squared over 2 plus 2x. Now, from there, I now want to find lowercase f, which basically means derive this. So when I derive this, okay, if I were to derive this, when I derive this, so f of x, means I'm going to derive this, so that would be, put the power up front, would be 2x squared over 2 plus the root of 2x is just 2 which equals x squared plus 2. Now, what do you notice is x squared plus 2. Isn't it the same thing as oh, the x squared? No, I'm an idiot. 2 comes up out. There's no x squared. It's simply going to be x plus 2. Again, the 2's cancel. The 2 jumps out front, making a 1 power, so that's gone. So is x plus 2 the same as t plus 2? So basically, what you notice is when you integrate this and then derive it again, so you integrate this, you got this. And then when you derive it again, you get back to basically t plus 2, but the t is now this x value. So that, those are my two values. We wanted this one, and we wanted this one. And to get from here to here, what we did is derive both sides. It's kind of really stupid to do all this method of integrating and then deriving. It's kind of a waste of time. but. Um, it's called the second fundamental theorem of calculus. There's a shortcut. Basically, if you notice it, all you do is take this x, plug it in for t, and you're done. So basically, if we want to derive this, well, if we're going to derive both sides, basically, when you derive this, your answer is simply going to be the fourth root of x. You basically plug the x into here. When you plug in 1, what you'll notice is when you plug in 1, you will get some sort of constant here. But when you derive a constant, this constant disappears. Um, so you really don't need to worry about this one down here. As long as this is a constant and this is an x, when all you do when you derive this, you basically plug that value in. And that is your answer. Okay. If I want to derive this, well, if I derive this, I could go back to this and basically, oh, I plug in the x. But is this one a number? No, it's not a number. So what I'm going to do is I have to break this up so it looks like this. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to break it up in two intervals. Since this is negative x and this is positive x, isn't there, um, isn't 0 have to be between here? From negative x to x, wouldn't 0 have to be between here? Or some constant? Let's call that some constant. Let's call it c. And probably it's going to be 0. But if we go from negative x to c of t to the third dt, and then if I continue that from negative x to c, what if I go then from c to the x? Because we're going from negative x to x. I basically broke this integral into two pieces with c as the break point. I can do that. I can break it up into two separate intervals of integrals on different intervals. Now I can do both of these separately, which is nice because c is a constant. You could actually make c 0 if you want, but it's some number in between negative x and x. So for this one, what you first are going to have to do is you first have to understand this is going to be c to the negative x because you need your constant on the bottom. And when you do that switch, you have to put a negative out front. And for this one, this is the same thing as this. So basically, you're just going to plug x in. So this one actually is x to the third. 
because again, we're going to derive both of these. The whole goal is you're deriving this. So you're going to derive, so that one's done. You just plug it in. This one ends up being, this piece right here, ends up being when you plug in negative x, um, you end up with the negative in front, then you plug in negative x and cube it, but there's one more step that I haven't mentioned yet, is there's a chain rule effect going on. So what's going to happen is this negative x, you actually have to derive negative x, and you actually get negative 1, and you have to multiply by it, the chain rule idea. Now, why didn't we multiply by the derivative of x? Well, the derivative of x is 1. I could sit here and multiply by 1, but it's a waste of time. So we didn't need it to. But here, since this value on top is a negative x, you have to derive it. So my answer ends up being negative, negative, negative becomes a negative x to the third plus an x to the third right here is positive x to the third. My answer is 0. So all of that basically means my answer is 0. When you derive this, you will get 0. All right, number 90. We're going to derive this. This one looks a lot like this one, except it's an x squared on top. So to do this one, again, when you derive, you basically plug the x squared in. So you're going to get 1 over x squared to the third. But you then, like I said over here, because this is not just x, you have to derive it. So we now multiply by the derivative of x squared. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. Now we'll be done. So this will be 2x over x squared to the third is x to the sixth which your answer is 2 over x to the fifth. So again, for this, you basically take this value, plug it in, derive that, multiply by it, and then simplify. As long as this is a constant down here. If this isn't a constant, you have to maybe break it up into two intervals. If it is a constant like this and it is an x, you basically plug it in, don't even have to worry about this chain rule effect. Or for all three of these, you could do the long way right here. Here's the long way. It's really dumb. Let's integrate it, and then let's derive it again. That's a waste of time. Th this is called the second fundamental theorem of calculus. It's very short, very slick. It's all about deriving an integral where you have a constant and an x, and this is in a different type of variable than x, usually t.